Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this third video on how to avoid plagiarism. I am Ashley Squires, the director of the Writing Center at Avila University. And in previous videos, I've talked about major types of plagiarism and one of the big reasons why students plagiarize, which is procrastination. So procrastination is related to this second reason why a lot of students wind up plagiarizing. And that's because for many people, fear of writing is what leads to procrastination in the first place. There are a lot of people for whom writing assignments are just really scary things. And that includes many people who are actually quite gifted writers. So maybe you've had the experience of getting bad feedback on your writing and that kind of freaked you out. Maybe it's really difficult for you to concentrate in front of a computer. Um, maybe when you're sitting there with your laptop open and that cursor is blinking away at you, you're just absolutely miserable and it can start to feel like there is something wrong with you. Um, and that if you were good at writing, this just wouldn't feel so hard. But the reality is that if you have ever sat in front of a computer and really struggled to make words appear on the screen, you're having basically the average of experience of writing. Um, writing is really hard. And that is true even of gifted genius writers. And in fact, we have great examples of this even in popular culture. So you might remember the musical Tick, Tick, Boom, which was made into a film last year directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda and released on Netflix. And it tells the story of its author, Jonathan Larson, who was a composer and playwright who would eventually go on to write Rent, which is one of the most famous musicals of all time. Um, the Jonathan Larson, who's again, the real person, but is also the character, is in a situation in which he's about to present his musical that he's been working on for the last 10 years, for basically his entire 20s, to a bunch of Broadway producers in order to try to get it turned into a real show. And for the performance, he just needs to write one more song that will help tie the whole story together. And for most of the musical, he just can't get the song written. He has no ideas, and all of the circumstances of life keep getting in the way. He has a friend who's sick in the hospital. He and his girlfriend are fighting. He has to work his job in a diner to pay rent. His electricity gets cut off, and it's not until the early morning before the workshop that he is finally able to write this song. So the point is here that there are plenty of times when writing is just really, really hard, and that doesn't mean you're bad at it. There are people who are award-winning writers who feel this way sometimes. Um, in fact, the really celebrated writer Anne Lamott has an entire book where, in which she talks about this a lot. So if writing is scary for you, then I have a few different suggestions. And the first two of these are actually taken from Lamott herself. So the first is the same advice that I give to procrastinators, which is give yourself permission to write bad stuff. Um, nobody has to see it. Write the bad stuff so that you can revise it and turn it into good stuff. Okay, Anne Lamott calls this the principle of shitty first drafts. Um, just sit down and write whatever, whatever you need to do to get it down on the page, and then you can go back and start revising and shaping it. The second piece of advice is one that's probably somewhat familiar to you, which is to break down larger writing tasks into smaller ones. So if you know you have a five page paper to write, that can feel really impossible if you try to sit, it, sit down and tackle it all in one sitting or even in one day. So if you can, try to work ahead, maybe motivate yourself by making a writing center app appointment in advance, like I talked about doing in the previous video, and then sit down and write for like 15 minutes at a time. And you can say, I'm just going to write this one paragraph today, or in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to summarize this one source. Okay, make it something that feels manageable, something that can be accomplished in 15 to 30 minutes. Um, much more doable than sitting down to just write the entire five pages all in one go. So the final piece of advice is one that is a little bit more for the longer term. And this is to take time to learn about your own writing process. Um, and you may have a kind of a, maybe a stereotyped or a kind of rote understanding of what the writing process looks like. Um, and I want to kind of free you up to explore and experiment and figure out what works best for you here. So like at some point in school, you may have been taught pre-writing techniques like writing an outline. OK, um, and that works for some people writing an outline of the whole essay before you sit down to actually start drafting it. Um, it doesn't work for everybody. Um, it doesn't work for me, for example. I don't think I've written an outline um, since I left high school. 
Um, and that was a very long time ago, I must tell you. Um, so it doesn't work for everybody. Some people need to just sit down and write everything they think about a topic in as messy and disorganized a fashion as you can imagine before they can start giving it shape. Um, this is a technique that I call brain dumping because you're literally just dumping out your brain on the topic onto the paper or into the computer document. Some people, on the other hand, need to read for a while before they can kind of figure out what they themselves think about a topic. So they need to think of writing more as responding to something else rather than just sitting down and trying to come up with their own ideas. Um, figuring out what works for you takes a lot of experimentation. Um, and in addition to brainstorming and pre-writing methods, you need, may need to figure out if you write better in the morning or late at night, or if you are an inside person versus an outside person. So as an illustration of this, um, there was an interview recently between New York Times columnist Ezra Klein and the novelist Kim Stanley Robinson, who has written over 30 books in the last couple of decades. It's a very prolific and successful writer. I've read some of these books and they are very, very large. Um, and Robinson talked about how in the last few years, he just hit a wall. Some of this was related to the pandemic. Some of it was just the fact that he's been writing so long. He was having trouble writing, and in fact, he was starting to worry that his career might be over, that he just wasn't going to be able to write anymore. And then he tried moving his workspace outside. Um, and it worked so well for him that he put this tarp up over his chair um, so that he could work there during the rain. Um, and some people just really can't even think on a computer. Notice there's no computer terminal here. Some people need a pad of paper and a pen. Some people um, can't think with implements in their hands at all. Sometimes um, people need to kind of, again, get, get out in nature where they think best. Um, go take a walk, lie in the grass, take up knitting, um, go for a run, um, play a sport, do whatever you need to do, you know, something where your brain can kind of hum along in the background as you're going. And it's a good idea to maybe keep a pen and a some notes paper or your phone with a notes app close at hand so that you can write down ideas if they come to you. Um, but writing and inventing doesn't necessarily mean just sitting and staring at a Word document all day. Some people just cannot be productive that way. Um, also consider alternative techniques to sitting down and writing. Um, some people do better if they record their thoughts and then go back and transcribe them later. Um, and in fact, that's a technique we'll use in the writing center, have students talk about their ideas and then go back and write them down. Um, so while you're a student, this is actually a really great time to do some experimentation and figure out what works for you. Even if you aren't planning on becoming a professional writer, and that's fine, everybody has to do some writing sometimes. And that is true no matter which career you pick. Um, and so having some confidence in your ability to get it done will help you avoid the temptation to take shortcuts or to do things that are a little bit unethical or that are otherwise counterproductive, even if there's not like an ethics or honesty problem. Um, just remember that the best writing process is the one that works for you. There is no single right way to approach this. Some people might try to sell you on the idea that their process is the best one, but the truth is, is that the best writing process is whatever helps you get words on the page. So if writing is an intimidating task for you, I hope this video helps you understand that while writing is difficult for most people, developing a better understanding of your own process can make it easier. And furthermore, there is just no reason to feel shame if you are having difficulty writing, because that experience is nearly universal, even among really talented writers who do this professionally. And finally, one of the benefits of understanding your own process and adopting strategies that work for you is that it will make it less likely for you to be tempted to avoid the task entirely by taking somebody else's work. So if you come to the Writing Center, we will be happy to help you along on this journey of self-discovery. Thank you very much for watching.